What are three things you need to work on before you even tackle the scale on the practice chanter? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Too often people try to start with the scale on the chanter. They get disgruntled, they get frustrated, and that chanter gets locked away in the basement. And dreams of being a bagpiper are over. Or maybe you start out on the chanter and you get some success, but then you just don't stick with it and you just think, oh, I just don't want to go back and face trying to get that scale down again. The scale is tough. There's, there's the issue of finding the holes with your fingers. There's the issue of even getting that low G note to get that bottom pinky to stretch and reach the hole. So the scale can be a really tough thing to get started with. So I'm going to show you three easy things to get started on first. The first thing is the top hand. The top hand, our bottom hand can be in the low A position. Our bottom hand is usually our right hand, top hand usually the left hand. Fingers are fairly straight, not curled up. The bottom hand has a pinky hole. That pinky can be up off the hole. It doesn't have to stretch and reach that when we go through our top hand notes. And the first thing we're going to work on is just our top hand notes. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start on E. Our E note, our ring finger is up of our top hand, pinky finger is up. All the other holes have a finger or thumb on them. There is a thumb hole on the back for the top hand, not the bottom hand. So there's our E note. We go up to F, one finger up to F. So we're on F, now we're going to lift that last finger. The top finger of the top hand, just our thumb is on the back. And that, that G note can be a little tricky because now you feel like you have no stability in the chanter. Uh, so I do have some tips around that. It's all in my beginner's workshop. You can click on the link below um, for, for all the lessons in my new, new bagpipe beginner's workshop. And, and I have some tips on helping steady the chanter and a little bit more on finger positioning, wrist positioning, all that sort of jazz. But in this video, we're just focusing on the three things to work on before the scale. And this is the first one, is the top hand. So we're on the E, we've lifted one finger up to the F, we've lifted the next finger up to the G. Now we go up to high A. That transition from G to high A, the thumb is going to come off the hole on the back of the chanter. At the same time, the ring finger of your top hand is going to hit its hole and stay there. That's our high A. This whole time, our bottom hand has done nothing other than the pinky fingers up, and we've just focused on the top hand. So there's our way up. Now for the way down, we're going to do the reverse. The thumb catches the hole, the ring finger lifts up to our G. Now we bring down the first finger to go to F. Next finger to go to E. And you've made it all the way up and all the way down just with that top hand. So that's the first thing you want to work on. Again, fingers are fairly straight, not curled up with the tips on the holes. We're more flat. The, the pad, or even a little bit further down, is covering the holes of those fingers. Again, more on positioning in my workshop, in the links below. Um, but the second thing, next, the second thing to work on before jumping right into the scale. So the second thing to work on is going to be the bottom hand. We've worked on the top hand. Let's work on the bottom hand. We're not putting the two together just yet because that transition from bottom to top is really hard enough to make any, any beginner uh, bagpiper or, uh, take a hiatus or a sabbatical from the practice chanter. So, so we're, let's just focus on the bottom hand for the second thing. So the second thing to work on is our bottom hand. So while we're doing our bottom hand, our top hand covers all, the, all their holes. The thumb on the back is on its hole. The three fingers on the top are on their hole. 
Our first note is our low G, and this is a toughie because our pinky finger has to stretch down in that bottom hole. Next note is low A, that pinky finger lifts up to low A. Next note is our B note. We lift up the ring finger now and we'll have two fingers up in the air for the B note. Next we're going to go to C. So you'll see from B to C we drop the pinky finger and at the same time we lift up the middle finger of the bottom hand and the whole time our ring finger is doing nothing. It's just staying in the air the whole time. Our last note of the bottom hand is our D note. D is in dog. And we lift up that top finger of the bottom hand. And as you heard, I did a little squeak there in my chanter. It makes me, uh, you know, good, good time to talk about uh, squeaks, squawks mysterious sounds you don't even know what to name the three most common causes of those interesting sounds not blowing hard enough like you might get some squeaks or some grunts if you're not quite blowing hard enough if you blow too hard that's where the chanter cuts out completely so that chanter cuts right out and the other thing that can cause weird and interesting sounds is if your fingers you're trying so hard to get the pinky on the bottom G hole, for example, three other fingers are sliding off their hole. So you might get some weird sounds with that too. All that is a normal part of the process. Don't beat yourself up for it. Just embrace it and trust in the process. Get the repetition in the top hand. Get the repetition in the bottom hand. And when you have repetition in each of those, you're ready for the third thing. The third and final thing to work on before you put the whole scale together is transitioning from the bottom hand to the top hand. And this is just to work on this piece all alone, all by itself, just get repetition with that. Because there's a lot of finger movements going on and your brain is having to integrate top hand and bottom hand movement all, all at the same time. So let's walk through this. You're on the D. We know the D note already. Pinky fingers down on the bottom hand. Other three fingers are up. We're going to go up to E. And we can practice going back again. So when we're going up, our three fingers that are up on the bottom hand are going to drop down. At the same time, we lift up our pinky finger of our bottom hand, and at the same time, we lift up our ring finger of the top hand. And then to go back, we're doing the opposite. We're dropping the ring finger of the top hand, we're dropping the pinky finger of the bottom hand, and we're lifting up those three fingers of the bottom hand. So we're ending up back in that D position. And that is going to cause all sorts of squeaks. <laughs> don't, don't, don't sweat it. Just stick with it and do that back and forth. When you're sounding like a little bit like an ambulance, fire truck, you know you're getting it. So a quick recap, we have the top hand, that's the first thing to work on. We have the bottom hand, that's the second thing to work on. We have the transition from bottom to top, that's the third thing to work on. When you feel like you have those three pieces, fairly solid, maybe not perfect, but fairly comfortable, each on their own, then you're ready to put the full scale together. Bottom to top, top to bottom, back and forth. Try to keep your timing fairly regular. Welcome the mistakes and squawks and squeaks and just work on that repetition.
Thanks so much for watching and can't wait to see you in more lessons of my new beginner's bagpipe workshop. Click on the link below the video if you want to access those lessons in the workshop. Until next time, keep on piping on.